player in a formidable and creative half-forward line. Munster and All-Ireland champions Tipperary make their first appearance in this year's championship. Despite the absence of Conor O'Donovan and John Kennedy from the first 15, this Tipperary team has all the credentials necessary for a championship winning combination. In the full back line, Colin Bonner is the most interesting choice at right corner back, where he links up with Noel Sheehy and John Heffernan. Bobby Ryan returns to his favourite position at centre back, but it is the Tipperary forward line that looks exceptionally talented. Willie Horgan from the Brian Dillons Club in Cork refereeing this clash between Tipperary and Limerick. And even before the whistle is blown, he already has to caution the two midfielders there, Mike Rail and Joe Hayes. A warm, gentle summer breeze blowing down from the hills of County Clare here at the Gaelic Grounds in Limerick as Tipperary try and defend the All-Ireland title that it took them 18 years to win. An electric atmosphere at the Gaelic Grounds as Limerick with Don Flynn, the centre half-back, sending it up towards his corner forward there, Shane Fitzgibbon, and immediately referee Willie Horgan accuses the Limerick man of uh, fouling the Tipperary right corner back, Colin Bonner, and a free out to Tipperary. Connell Bonner, one of three brothers playing for Tipperary today, into Nicholas English, and just to the right and wide. He had to kick it in rather than get his hurley to it, but uh, it certainly was a golden opportunity for Tipperary. The long ball dropped into Nicholas English and just to the wrong side of the post. A very warm afternoon and certainly, as you can see in the background, the Gaelic grounds in Limerick packed to capacity. Gary Kirby scored seven points against Clare and that's his first point of this Munster Championship semi-final. Tommy Quaid's lengthy puck out drops down inside the Tipperary 45 metre line. This is Joe Hayes, captain for the day from Clanalty Ross Moore. Showing some nice skill. Referee waving play on. Comes down towards Michael Cleary from Nina. Colin Bonner inside and Tommy Quaid, a magnificent save. Nicholas English is there and Limerick survived, but only just. Declan Ryan, referee is blowing his whistle and he's giving a free to Tipperary on the 20 metre line. Well, what a save by Tommy Quaid. It was eventually cleared by Joe O'Connor, but surely there Tipperary could have penetrated the Limerick defence. Nicholas English to equalise the match. And that's exactly what he does after four and a half minutes of play. Line ball for Limerick. Farmer from Kilmallock, Mike Houlihan, brilliantly cut by Bobby Ryan, intercepted by Mike Rail, up to Kieran Carey, getting inside, John Heffernan, well hooked by Bobby Ryan, still Carey, showing some nice skill, can he finish it? Yes! And Limerick stretched their lead to two points. The young lad from Patrick's well scored a point against Clare and he's done it again against Tipperary. Fine, lengthy puck out by Tommy Quaid. Ger Hegarty getting that first. Terence Kenny getting his first real touch of the afternoon. No Sheehy staying alongside. Nobody outside for Terence, but uh, Terence has a go. Oh, magnificent point! Well, I really didn't think he was going to do it, but Terence Kenny has certainly got his gander up, as they say, and that is a magnificent score. Well, Limerick mentors looking on anxiously, and they certainly must be pleased so far. Paul Delaney trying to find Nicky English. Drops inside to Pat Carey. Coolness personified, gives it to Cher Hegarty. And the Limerick crowd responds to the fine hurling by the Shannon Siders. Break comes down to Shane Fitzgibbon. Can he make up for the error a moment ago? It is a definite point and a definite yes. Shane Fitzgibbon, the daddy of the side, still in his early 20s. And Limerick stretched their lead even more. by Don Flynn, knocks it down but Paul Delaney accepts the break. Mike Rail, and these Limerick lads are playing with all their heart, I can assure you. Rail dropping it in towards Terence Kenny, no she is there as well, Terence Kenny gathers it, break comes out, back to Kenny, calling outside is Kieran Carey. And Kenny sends it high and over the bar. If the 
first 13 minutes are anything to go by, Tipperary are going to have a hard battle here because Limerick are playing brilliantly. The ball broke down. Terence Kenny's attempted shot at goal was blocked. Shane Fitzgibbon managed to get it back out towards him. There was Kieran Carey loose calling for it. But Kenny, his confidence sky high at the moment, sent it high and straight over Ken Hogan's crossbar. Ken Hogan dropping it down and Mike Barron guilty there of hitting Cormac Bonner off the wall and referee Willie Horgan saw the challenge and he's taking his number and putting his name into the book and he's sending him off Mike Barron is gone off this monster championship semi-final the ball was breaking inside and he hit Cormac Bonner just have a look at this again a controversial moment after 16 minutes of play in this Monster Championship semi-final. Limerick down to 14 men as Nicholas English scores to Pereira's fourth point. Six points to four, but definitely controversy reigns at the Gaelic grounds. Many, many times in the past it has happened and it is well recorded that teams with only 14 men often perform heroically. But when you're playing the All-Ireland Champions in a Munster Championship semi-final, well then, boy, have you got a challenge on your hands. This is Mike Rail, John Leahy nipping in as Tipperary used the extra man to narrow the gap to just one point. Don Flynn with this free, son of Donny Flynn, the selector on the Slimrick side. Shane Fitzgibbon, good score. A very dangerous corner forward. And Limerick stretch now their lead to two points. Anthony Carmody moved out around the centre of the field now. Try and maintain advantage as Gary Kirby tries to get inside Bobby Ryan. Still Kirby is fouled and a free end for Limerick. You could actually see that coming as Bobby Ryan was finding the speed of Kirby difficult to cope with and Limerick once again have another free. And there it is, the white flag, which means now that Limerick have eight points to Tipperary spy. Bobby Ryan in all sorts of difficulties, I feel, in the opening 23 minutes of this first half with Gary Kirby playing there at centre forward. Puts it over the bar, and Limerick stretch their lead again. Paul Delaney has the height, and Tommy Quaid has to be satisfied to see it drop over his crossbar. And now there's just three points between the sides. John Heffernan giving it aside to Gary Kirby and certainly if Limerick are going to be stopped this man is going to have to be stopped because he's causing Tipperary endless problems at centre half forward already in this first half 17 frees as Gary Kirby puts that over the bar and scores his fifth point of this championship semi-final 
It's Cormac Bonner. The two Limerick lads are on him. This is Nicky English forcing his way through into John Leahy. Tommy Quaid is out. And an almighty melee has developed. And referee has blown his whistle as Pat Fox and Don Flynn exchange rough words and action as well. And Tommy Quaid is down on the deck. Nicky English sent it into John Leahy. Tommy Quaid came out, so too was Joe Connor there. Leahy and Quaid between them got down, but uh, it's very hard to know what exactly happened. An almighty melee. And back to the action, we have another melee here. Nicky English and midfielder there, Mike Rail. And this time, his referee, Willie Horgan, is putting the Limerick midfielder into his book. In fact, his uh, left corner back, Joe O'Connor, that's being booked by the referee, Willie Horgan. Well, Nicholas English with this opportunity. And now it's 11 points to eight. Just about 30 seconds left in normal time in the first half. Pat Devon, Bobby Ryan switched to right half back. Sending a ball in towards Kieran Carey. Paul Delaney gets there first. Doesn't quite hit it and clear it. And Kieran Carey. Well, for this first half, he's my hero undoubtedly for Limerick. But Bobby Ryan sends it down to his opposite number. Centre half back Don Flynn. And referee is giving no extra time in this first half. And here at the Gaelic grounds in Limerick. The atmosphere is truly electric as the teams go off at half-time to their respective managers, Babs Keating and Limo Donahoe. But it has lived up to all the expectations and at half-time, Limerick lead by three points, Limerick 11 points, Tipperary 8. John Madden from Laura in place of John Heffernan and he will take his position at left corner back. While up front, Dinny Ryan from Newport goes in at left corner forward and going off is Cormac Bonner and Nicholas English takes up duty right at the edge of the square. The second half of this Munster Championship semi-final. Limerick leading by three points. They're down one man, but they're playing with a slight wind advantage in the second half. Tommy Quaid's puck out right into the centre of the park. Joe Hayes getting early to it, but this is Mike Rail coming through like a tornado. And what a start for Limerick! An excellent score! Limerick 12 points, Tipperary 8, and no doubt about it, but Limerick are here to win. Gar the Basin Rusquay, Joe Hayes. This is Declan Carr. A great effort, which sails gently over the bar. A fine point by the Holy Cross, Valley Cahill man. Over to John Leahy. Switching play, Nicholas English and Pat Carey. English collects, falling outside is Declan Ryan. He switches it to Ginny Ryan, publican from Bird Hill. Been beaten there by Mike Houlihan. And Limerick battling every inch of the way. This is Joe Hayes giving it to Nicky English, who has to come out to collect. And you don't give space like that to a man called Nicky English. Limerick 13 points, Tipperary 11. Ter Hegarty from the old Christians Club in the Jamesboro area of Limerick City. Kieran Carey just taking his eye off it for a moment. No Sheehy clearing it down towards Michael Cleary. And the Tipperary find of the year 1989 sweeps it up towards Pat Fox. John Leahy trying to get it out towards his corner forward, but Limerick there again, Mike Rail without a hurley, Joe Connor, this is Pat Fox giving it inside to Nicholas English, Tipperary in a dangerous position, sweeping it across to Declan Ryan, it's there, a goal for Tipperary! Declan Ryan from Canalty Ross Moore at the back of the Limerick net, and this is how it came about, Nicky English again, Sweeping a ball right across the face of Tommy Quaid's goal. Declan Ryan controlled it, and then, bang, right into the net. Great goal. This is Declan Carr. 
running into space is Declan Ryan. His confidence boosted now. And there he puts the icing on his own personal kick as Declan Ryan now has a goal and a point to his credit. As Tommy Quay takes the puck out, Limo Dunahoo has switched Ger Hegarty back to centre half back to keep an eye on Declan Ryan. Linesman indicates it's a Limerick ball. Referee says it's Tipper Aries. Joe Hayes, Michael Cleary, in fact, it is just inside the Limerick 65. It's a beauty. And Tipper Aries now are three points ahead of Limerick. The Limerick mentors must be wondering now can their side respond to this enormous challenge? They're down by one man and down by three points. Gary Kirby. Kieran Carey. A point is what Limerick need, and they've got it. They're back in the hunt. Two points between the sides. Tipperary 113, Limerick 14 points. And going off, Pat Davern, and coming in, Michael Galligan from the Clahan Club. And that's 65. Sends sweetly over the bar, restores Tipperary's three point lead. Michael Babs Keating talking anxiously there to his colleagues in the selection committee. Gary Kirby getting inside the Tipperary rear guard. Still Gary Kirby, and then what a shot, brilliantly saved by Hogan. And Bobby Ryan comes out. First time Gary Kirby got inside, but Colin Bonner did well and then hit a shot which Ken Hogan responded to magnificently. Declan Carr to John Leahy. Michael Cleary inside. And there's plenty of Gaelic ground in front of him. And from that angle, it's no problem whatsoever to the man from Nina. Tipperary 118. Limerick, 14 points. This is Colin Bonner going back. And clearing the danger. Oh, magnificently gathered by Pat Fox, bearing down on the Limerick goal. To his left is Dinny Ryan. This is what's sure to be it. And that is unquestionably it. Dinny Ryan, the publican from Bird Hill. There'll be drinks galore tonight. Because now, undoubtedly, Tipperary are through to the Monster Hurling Final on the 15th of July. It was Pat Fox who really created it. It was a magnificent catch. And despite the best efforts of Joe Hegarty, Dinny Ryan was left all alone. And Tommy Quaid bravely coming out. But that's it, the back of the Limerick net. Gary Kirby going for goal, blocked down by Noel Sheehy, comes in again! Great goal! Boris Nelligan, the man who found the back of Ken Hogan's net. Ball coming in, they're waiting for it and pulling on it it's splendidly. In fact, it was Michael Galligan, and really Ken Hogan had no chance. And that's it, the final whistle blows on a day when Tipperary record their third victory in a row over Limerick, on a day when Tipperary had numerical advantage for most of it after Mike Barron for Limerick had been sent off. But all credit due to Tipperary, the Munster and All-Ireland champions battled their way forth to a Munster hurling final appearance on the 15th of July. They won today's Munster semi-final on a scoreline of Tipperary, two goals and 20 points, Limerick, one goal and 17. Yeah, I think we were well prepared for Limerick to be probably a, a very tough challenge to us, you know. We came in to their home ground, they had already played a championship match and I suppose in reality we haven't played since last September and we've, we had a few injuries coming into it with John Kennedy out and a few more people carrying injuries, so we were prepared for it and, and I think Limerick really did put us up, put it up to us, you know. Uh, without a doubt, Mounty, the sending off was a turning point because we had tip well hold at that stage and uh, we were containing their forward line, but uh, we had to reshuffle the complete back line as a result of the sending off and uh, we lost our composure there, but uh, all lads battled on and I'm very proud of them. We've learned an awful lot over the years and we've learned enough to respect Cork. Uh, any 
hurling enthusiasts in Munster that would play Cork Down is in Cuckooland. And uh, I know, going by, I've seen Tipperary, uh, Cork and Tipperary back to 1960. I know what Cork teams are produce, able to produce, and I know what Cork underdogs are able to produce. Uh, if they beat us, we'd shake hands with them, but uh, they won't surprise us. I'm sure they certainly will not. Babs Keating there early in the match. Let's have a look at it again. Now, the normal um, action, John, we can't really see because Cormac Bonner has gone down at that stage, but notwithstanding the reason for it, uh, referee Willie Horgan was very definite himself as to exactly what he wanted to do. Yes, I think um, Willie Horgan made up his mind. Uh, it was very difficult for us to see it, you know, and he was quite clear in his mind what he wanted to do. Maybe he was afraid the game would get out of hand. And, um, but it certainly had an effect. Uh, I think Limerick battled bravely and uh, not, you know, some players didn't really perform for the full hour. But the, per the player that, um, that I really picked was uh, Declan Ryan. He scored 1-4. And he scores. He showed the way for Tipperary at a time when they needed leadership. And I felt, you know, that he he, he for me was the man of the match. Here's a, a fine example of a great point from the sideline, where Declan striking from the sideline. You know, I mean that point yeah. shows the, the quality the of the player he is. And also he's involved in the goal. A good build up here between Nicky English, where Declan Ryan waiting on the edge of the square. A difficult ball still to put away, but he puts it away. And a good sign of a centre forward to put himself on the edge of the square in a situation like that. Uh, as I say, he scored 1-4. There could have been many other men of the matches. Um, I think, uh, in fairness to, to Limerick, I'd like to mention um, Pat Carey and Kieran Carey, Mike Reel. Some of them had excellent games, but um, I felt that the jury, they didn't outstand the whole game.